there! I'm Sarah A. Chrisman, the author of The Tales of Chatsunoka, and quite a few other books about the Victorian era. I hope you've all been enjoying my books and telling your friends about them. These books are how I make my living, so I really appreciate it when people support me by supporting my work and spreading the word about my books and helping their friends find them too. And I hope it spreads a little, little joy in the world. That's a big aspect of why I'm a writer. Now I promised I would give you occasional updates on my house restoration projects, but I don't want to get the channel too far off topic because after all you came here for Victorian cultural themes and for my books. <laughs> so I'll be releasing videos about the house in themed clumps as different aspects of things get to any sort of point that's worth talking about at all. That's going to be interesting to anybody. Uh, this is the first of those clumps, or little mini-series, if you will, and this is about the plumbing. owner of our house who actually lived here passed away in the 1980s at the ripe old age of 99. Between her death and the time we bought it in 2021, the house passed through a few different hands, but crucially no one lived here. For those of you who know about what happens to plumbing in general when it doesn't get used, this should say plenty. And for those of you who know about any sort of standing water in Midwest winters when the temperature can get down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, this should say even more. The fact that there was a big hole in the roof certainly didn't help matters, but that's another story. When we bought the house, the real estate agent told us there were, quote, a few leaks, unquote, but he assured us they could be easily fixed. When we got here, we found that the leaks were, in fact, the only places any water was coming out of the pipes at all. <laughs> On top of that, a repulsive amount of filth had been left behind in the house, which we had to start cleaning with out a good way to wash ourselves. I had to haul our wash water in a bucket from a public spigot down the street, and we had to buy our drinking water seven miles away in the closest town with a grocery store. The water pipes, drains, and toilets in our house all fell into one or more of a few different categories. Some were clogged with accreted rust. When pipes don't have water r regularly running through them, the rust and other particulate matter settles and becomes rock hard. This had happened with every plumbing pipe in the house. Many of the pipes were cracked. Water expands when it freezes, and if it doesn't have anywhere to go, it cracks the vessel holding it. A lot of the plumbing was both clogged with rust in some places and cracked in others. At various times, this caused leaks that were long-lived enough to seriously damage the plaster in the walls and ceilings of the underlying rooms and we've had to go through the laborious process of plaster repair on all of these. Our first priority, though, was running water. After our initial landing in Iowa, we knew I was here for keeps, but at that point Gabriel still hadn't lined up a job here yet, and he only had about one week to set up running water for me before he had to go back to his job in Washington again. While he was still here, he launched into a breakneck pace race against time, to at least get me running water to the kitchen sink before he left. Say again what you were just saying about... So this is why the sink was just barely dribbling. You can see it's almost completely full of rust. And this is why the toilet tank wasn't filling at all because it is completely plugged with rust. <laughs> and you can see the general corrosion on the rest of everything, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, most of it wouldn't come apart, which is why I cut it out. <laughs> you can see even in the big feed pipe, it's pretty clogged. Oops, yep. I don't want to drip. Don't drip that. Get yeah. that outside. Don't get it outside. I thought it was fun, but it's not fun. <laughs> I think that's a good lesson for everything. Most everything in the plumbing in this house is not fun. <laughs> it is not okay. <laughs> mm. Basically... This was the valve to turn on the hot water to the rest of the house, and you can see how 
corroded that was, and you can see how full of grime and rust and ick, and especially inside here, how plugged up that is. I'm hoping that all the furnace pipes are, the boiler pipes aren't like that, but we will see. You can see that this is also incredibly corroded. Uh, this is where cold water was going to come in to the hot water heater, and that wasn't happening. Um, so this is the upstairs bathroom that I'm, well, working on pretty much all the plumbing at once here, but this is the next project. So you can see there's a bunch of rust stains under that tap, and the tap is clearly not new. This is the original one that I'd like to put back on there. Um, it does have the original wonderful drain there. Um, and then this is a newer toilet. Unfortunately, it's not connected to anything. So maybe I can find the original toilet, hopefully down where this was, but buried under another pile of crap. Um, you can see that there's the metal bracket for hanging the tank on the wall. And you can see the floor has suffered a little bit with some of the water leaks. And the uh, sink has also got some challenges in the porcelain and the cast iron down here in the, in the base. And I'm a little worried about that, but I don't think this is an original sink, so we'll see what we end up doing with this. Many more projects. Another one is, of course, this is what I took off of this terrible shower stall. The quality that this piece of plastic exudes is just unmistakable. Look at the cheapness of everything and the fact that both of these sides of the plastic have simply sheared off as if they were never there, leaving no possible way to make this functional. Let's hear it for plastics. Tell me about this wonderful thing you have done. Well, this wonderful thing is that now we have hot water and cold water in this particular sink, so that now we can wash ourselves in something other than frigid fluid. And we have water. We didn't when we came. That's right. We have water of both types, hot and cold running water, and it even goes away when we want it to. Now, I do have a couple tiny drips down there. But tiny drips I will take right now for functional systems. And this gives us both hot and cold water so that we can connect. Well, we have a shower downstairs now, too, that has the ability to have something other than a cold shower. So that's a very good start. So in order to have part of the plumbing system on so that the, the toilet and one of the sinks will work and an outside tap, I've rigged up the, the basic thing here, but I've also got separate valves on all the bits that are going to come off to go to the rest of the house, all of which are off right now, uh, so that basically in the long run we can, well, hopefully in the fairly short run, I can finish things up and, and uh, have more plumbing working. But at least we have the basics right now. This very old faucet looks like it wasn't turning off, but perhaps if I adjust it, and wrap it in plumber's tape and put it back together. How many rolls of this stuff do I have going at this point? How many rolls of plumber's tape <laughs> must <laughs> one person use? <laughs> How many jars of plumber's glue to make the plumbing of use? <laughs> Right. The answer, my friend, is flowing in the drains. Flowing in the pipes. <laughs> the answer is flowing in the pipes. <laughs> Luckily, this is the laundry room sink and doesn't have to look perfect. Which it doesn't. Because... Do we have functionality? We have functionality. We've got functionality, lots of functionality. <laughs> but we have a drip, mm. like so many others. But before, we had flow that wouldn't shut off at all. So we certainly have made an improvement here. So, oh, and look, the drip is slowing. So at least maybe it's a good thing. It at least works. And now the drain doesn't leak either. So we are making significant progress here. So working on the tub here, um, you can see some of the rust that's been in the, the water lines, of course, dripping down in there. That's 
that whole drug is uh, the whole drain is going to have to get unplugged as well. But if you look, and I've taken out the, the faucet finally here, which took a little bit of wrenching. If you look behind here, you can see the sheer amount of corrosion and scale on this hot water pipe, which has already been replaced. This is not the original one, as far as I can tell. Um, but it is very corroded, and now I'm probably going to have to cut it out from where it lives back there, um, because I can't unthread things. They're just too corroded. The cold water side was in better shape. This is probably the original nicely nickel-plated pipe, um, but it is even this one is a little bit rusty on the inside and we'll probably end up replacing it, much to my dismay, of course. But you can see that there's just, even on this one, there's a lot of rust inside it and we don't particularly want that moving forward. So as long as we're replacing things, luckily this one's accessible, it's right there, so we can replace that. The ones that go through the floors and all of that are much more difficult. If you get down there, you can see where the cold water comes up where there's that flanged mount, and that flanged mount is original. They don't make them anymore, uh, as I discovered, asking around at the hardware store. And so we're going to have to find another way to support these pipes once they get in there. They're pretty heavy, and they sort of are freestanding, so they, they have to have something that supports their weight on the floors, otherwise they are going to move and rattle and do terrible things, and I don't want that. So, yet more challenges. So this original tap for the, for the tub, which I was hoping to put back on, unfortunately is missing pieces. Uh, it's missing whatever goes on here to actually provide the, the rubber, um, uh, well, what would you call it exactly? In the modern faucets they call it a cartridge, but in this thing it's basically what's allowing you to turn the tap on and off and control the water pressure. But that should go into something that actually fits it, and that part is missing. And so these threads aren't long enough. Basically, there's unfortunately no way to use this without parts that no longer exist. So, too bad. Um, I'm definitely still going to save this as part of the original material from the house, but we're not going to be able to actually use it. Plus, it looks like it was pretty badly corroded inside by the time they took it off. There probably was a good reason for them to take it off in the first place. So, um, we'll have to find something good to put on there that looks right and that is uh, one of those reproduction ones. <laughs> no more plumbing! But I want a bath! No more plumbing! <laughs> it's raining, go out there! <laughs> oh, ever the humanitarian. <laughs> hey, I had a cold shower yesterday, a 10 minute cold shower, just because I was so dirty. And Sandow would have approved. Uh... Yes, I can just see it out here. Oh, I'm so dirty. I need a cold shower. <laughs> uh, hey, you have to live with me. I do. I do have to live with you. <laughs> How are we going to make this work? I'm just going to make it work. How about that? I think you can. Okay. I have faith in you. Okay, I'm doing it. Flames are always the right option. Mm -hmm. Come off of there. You've been on there for probably a hundred and something years. And now your time is done. Your long work is over. <laughs> you go to a better place. Not lying, but in any case, they don't have to know that, do they? chunks. A little bit more to clean up inside. But this is the piece I hope to reuse because they don't make these anymore. And I found it's rather inconvenient trying to make something like that from plumbing, you know, hardware store plumbing stuff. So I really like using the original ones when possible. And uh, these will work very nicely once I clean out the nasty bits of rust with the wonderful nut meat picks that Sarah saved for me from the collection of the BNB people. The nut meat picks do have a function in life, which I was hitherto pretty much unaware of, which is cleaning out rust scale from very old pipes.